Welcome uh, everyone to um, our select board meeting. It's Tuesday, March 21st. The hour is 7 p.m. And I'd like to invite everyone in the room to please join us with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you for that. Um, right at the outset tonight, um, I want to just um, note for the record that um, our colleague, Mr. Kelly, um, is not in attendance. He had a, uh, a conflict arise uh, with work and contacted me this morning. Um, that is unfortunate because this um, would be his last uh, meeting as a member of the board. So um, I know he's not going to be here present with us tonight. Um, we will endeavor to have him come back uh, in the next couple of meetings to um, see us in person and we can um, express our appreciation. But um, I do want to just offer a comment that um, I want to thank him for his service. Um, and I think um, we all, those of us uh, past and present who have served with him, um, I think would agree that uh, Mr. Kelly made our board um, better in the context of he asked a lot of questions. He challenged us to be um, very deliberate and diligent and um, consider the impacts of our decision on all of the different stakeholders in Tewksbury. Um, and I think at the end of the day, that's all any of us can do. But he did that exceptionally well, and he helped to make our board a, um, a complete board of five individuals, whether it's the current five that sit here or um, others who were here before some of us. Um, so I want to just um, publicly thank him and acknowledge his service um, for a, a couple of terms as a member of the board. Um, and we appreciate his um, contributions to our community. And I will say I appreciate that on a personal level as well. I'm sure my colleagues will have some other comments as we get into the meeting, but I wanted to acknowledge his absence uh, right out of the gate. Um, so we have um, a couple of items to tend to this evening. Uh, the first is a public hearing, and this involves a transfer of license, an alteration of premises, and um, a change in the operating and management agreement. Um, it is a public hearing. Um, let me read the hearing notice very quickly. Um, that notice is hereby given that the select board will conduct a public hearing in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 138 on Tuesday, March 21st, 2023 at 7 p.m. on the application of MHF uh, Tooks, is it T-E-W-K? Yep, I'm sorry. Operating Tenant 7 LLC doing business as Hilton Garden Inn uh, by James Tortolot, the manager to transfer an all alcoholic beverage license from Boston West Hospitality LLC doing business as Holiday in Tewksbury, along with an alteration of premises and management slash operating agreement to operate this license on said premises, which is located at 4 Highwood Drive in Tewksbury, Massachusetts, described as approximately 148,959 square feet of a five-story hotel. Um, the hearing will be held in the select board's meeting room at 1009 Main Street, Tewksbury, Mass. And of course, we always welcome input from the public. Um, and we will um, accept written comments uh, before the hearing, if so submitted. To my knowledge, there are no written comments. Um, but let me um, ask uh, two gentlemen in front of us to uh, introduce themselves for us, for the record. Yes, good evening. My name is Tyler Hensler from Upton, Cannell, and Devlin on behalf of the applicant, uh, MHF Took Operating Tenant VII LLC. Uh, for the purposes of this discussion, uh, let's just call them Magna. That's, that's the ultimate owner. Okay. Um, the applicant is seeking to transfer the license at the same location. Um, as you've just described, uh, and apply for also a management agreement uh, for a related management company, also a Magna company. Um, they're also rebranding as the Hilton Garden Inn and seeking to update the premises uh, to align with that rebranding with a patio. 
And here with me today is the uh, proposed manager of record, James Tortolot. Great. Um, and if it would be helpful, I could, I could yep. give you a little details about, I'm about the- I'm going to ask you to do that next. Yes, yep. absolutely. Um, As you can see, that we had a little bit of homework to look at. Yes, so. uh, <laughs> we, I, I was on the phone uh, today with Amy in the town manager's office, and uh, I, I told her that I, we, we try to err on the, the, the side of over-inclusion as opposed to- uh, We appreciate that. Yeah, no, uh, thank you for bearing with us. Um, so the hotel property uh, is being purchased by Magna uh, hospitality. They're an experienced hotel owner who um, basically right now at this point is coming in and buys hotels that uh, they find their need of kind of a refresh uh, makeover. Um, they have done so at dozens of places in the Midwest um, and uh, as well as Boston and Revere and are uh, currently seeking to do the same in Billerica, Westboro and of course Tewksbury okay. um, or Tewksbury. Um, I apologize. It's all right. <laughs> Uh, I'm from Rhode Island, so uh, I'm still trying to catch it on. It takes but, a little while. <laughs> uh, there will be upgrades in the hotel in the spirit of this rebrand to the Hilton Garden Inn uh, in, in the forms of a uh, patio area as well as uh, a cosmetic refresh of the common areas, rooms, uh, and, and lobbies. Is that right? um, we anticipate construction of the patio to be completed around this June, mm -hmm. um, putting uh, you know, a good investment into the community in that way. Uh, there is a management agreement with MHF Took Manager uh, VII LLC with respect to the food and beverage operations. Uh, this management company is owned by certain companies companies within the Magna uh, family. So it's a common uh, sort of uh, relationship between the management entity and the applicant uh, in these uh, sort of uh, larger chain hotel deals. Um, the proposed manager of record, James Tortolot, is a U.S. citizen and is, is familiar with the rules and regulations of the, uh, to the sale of alcohol in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, uh, and he has extensive experience in the industry. And uh, before I conclude with my uh, remarks, I'd like to thank uh, Paula and Amy and all others who we dealt with at the town, town hall uh, for being so helpful in preparing our application. Good to um, hear. And uh, we're happy to answer any additional questions, and thank you for your time. Okay. So let me ask a couple of quick questions and then I'll see what my colleagues have for you. Um, I know it's five stories. Do, do either of you know offhand how many rooms are involved? I yeah, can't remember. Uh, 227 rooms. 227? Yeah. Okay. And um, do you have an anticipated date that you'll be open? Are you open currently? Well, we are not open currently. Uh, we're, uh, and I appreciate everything Tyler's saying, but we're not doing uh, cosmetic uh, touches. Yeah. We're investing $18 million, so we literally, anyone okay. that knows the hotel or that's ever been in it, yeah. um, we have gutted the entire lobby. Uh, it's all the different tiers and yeah. levels have all been brought down to right? ground level. Okay. Going to have a nice open uh, concept inside, and then all 227 guest rooms are being uh, fully renovated as well. So we're down to the studs in those rooms at present and redoing all the bathrooms, the guest rooms. Swimming pools getting redone, uh, kitchens getting redone. So really, it's a, a major investment, and then we're looking forward to you know employing uh, probably upwards of 60 employees by the time we're said and done. So okay. it's uh, quite a project. Uh, and those of you that have been in town for a while know that it was a, a great hotel when it first opened, and it has kind of slid downhill a little bit since then. So we're excited to uh, come out as a Hilton product uh, with higher rates, uh, better clientele, and really uh, become you know, a shining beacon in the community again. So we're looking forward to that. What do you, what do you anticipate as your, um, your timeline to get to uh, completion? My apologies. That's so okay. um, we'll start selling guest rooms to the public again uh, probably the second week of May. Um, fourth and fifth floors will be back uh, so that we'll transition a little bit. Yeah. Uh, then we'll get the third floor back and come down. We'll fully be a Hilton Garden Inn, hopefully in September. Very good. Yeah. So that's not too bad. No, it's pretty exciting. Excellent. Well, it's a significant investment, so I want to thank, on behalf of your company, thank you, and you can take that message back. That's um, Michelle. It's a good investment in the community. Um, let me ask my colleagues if they have any questions. Sure. Yeah. As well. Just really quickly, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it's exciting to hear about your renovation, so thank you. I think it'll be, I, uh, as my colleague said, 
tremendous investment in our community. Um, will you be renting out function facilities? To uh, we will be. Uh, we have a, a grand ballroom that will be 2,800 square feet, uh, sit-down dinners up to 200, 220 people, depending on uh, the specific needs, mm -hmm. uh, uh, classroom seating uh, for 150 people. So if we were going to do a meeting, that type of thing. Convention. Uh, yep. And we have a couple other rooms that we're going to probably start as store rooms, um, but we're going to have all the infrastructure done, all the uh, uh, data lines and things like that ready to go and then probably in year two we'll renovate those into meeting space as well but, but we will anticipate having a great deal of function space uh, both uh, corporate and social the community has a need for function space um, with some recent acquisitions you may have become familiar with in town um, and so i know that people will be interested in working with you to put functions on in our community um, and i'm sure that you will be receptive to some of those I, events. I, I have to tell you, I have a, a stack of probably eight or 10 requests just from last week alone. Yeah. Uh, and some are short term and some are you know a lot further out. But uh, mm -hmm. no, we're really thrilled. Uh, we think we've got a great uh, location here uh, in Tuxbury. And then obviously, you know, Route 3, uh, 495, oh, yeah. 93. I mean, but it's a, it's a great corner we're sitting on over there. So we're pretty excited. It's really good. And there's bus service that runs from your facility um, to New York City, I think. Uh, there uh, from is. time to time. I hope you'll uh -huh. keep that because that's a really great asset for the community well, as well. Well, it, it's funny that you say that um, uh, because needless to say we had to cancel it because with all the construction and everything right. else, so we've canceled it. Uh, but they're eager to return and we would like to have them back. And really, it's not a lot of revenue for us to have them doing it. Right. But the exposure and getting people up to see our new hotel and the new business is going to uh, be a, a real addition. So, no, we're going to keep that going. Great. So okay. terrific. Thank you very much. I My appreciate pleasure. it. Thank you for this. A very complete, all of it, very complete application. I thank you. No, no problem. Awesome. Anyone on my left have any questions or comments? Mr. Yeah. Mackey. Just comments, Chairman. Thank you. Um, again, very complete package. Big fan of uh, when I traveled a lot as a consultant in my past life uh, while we stayed at the Hilton properties. So looking forward to uh, seeing this open up and uh, what you guys do with refurbing this property. Uh, it's, it, it'll be spectacular, and we will obviously host some events when we open uh, for the community and also for the town officials and that type of thing. Uh, needless to say, we're working very closely with an awful lot of you at this point. Uh, yeah. Some more closely than we'd like than others, perhaps. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're doing our best to stay on the straight we'll get to know everybody point. well. I think we're getting <laughs> to know people good. very well. So, right. But look forward to uh, having you over soon. Excellent. Thank you. Best of luck. Pleasure. Thank you. Mr. Kratman. Oh, yeah, I just have a couple of questions. So um, I understand you're doing the hotel over. Um, what about the like the driveways, the parking lots and things like that? Are you doing any work on the outside or any of those things that are going on or is that? In sure. So uh, one of the neat things about becoming a Hilton product is yeah. Hilton has very, very strict brand standards. Mm -hmm. So it's literally going down to painting the parking lot poles in the parking lot, um, all brand new signage. Um, all, uh, we're going to uh, have the whole parking lot redone, uh, sealed, striped, painted, et cetera, et cetera. So um, we were also, I was uh, walking the property with our chief engineer today, and we were talking about uh, even the grills that would fit over the PTAC units in the windows. Uh, those will all be treated and repainted as well. When Hilton uh, offers a franchise to a, a management company and an owner, they have very, very strict uh, policies. And Hilton Garden Inn is not a brand that you frequently repurpose. Mm -hmm. Hilton Garden Inns are generally new builds. Yeah. So the fact that we're not a new build is that their, restrict, or their um, uh, requirements of us, I think, are a little bit greater even. So uh, they'll be very thorough and make sure that everything is done, You know, even to the point of having new fences around the dumpster areas and things of that nature. So it uh, should be a, a very pretty when we're done. Uh, what about the highway signage? Um, I know you had some signage from the old location. Is that all being done over? I, I think they had a, do you still, do you have the, the big tall we sign that was that on, that's big, covered, I that believe. big tall pole sign, yes, yeah. it's covered now. Um, yeah. When you switch a flag, as we call it in the yeah. industry, you're required to cover that so that we don't show a uh, holiday in anymore. Yeah. So uh, that will have new signage, all our exterior signage will be new. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we can participate on the highway signs and things of that nature, uh, we'll do that also. 
I believe they had the old one had something on the boards. I think were, so too. I think so too, but they have to change from over. Yes. So okay. All right. No, that's. I just if you're going to have a new brand, obviously, and that's exciting. We we'll, we we'll welcome you to the community. Thank we you. want people to know about it, and we want to you know make you successful. So if I'd like to hear something that. we can do, well, that's great. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kratman. <laughs> All right, um, this is a public hearing, so let me uh, ask if anyone in the audience here, um, all two of you, if there are comments about uh, this particular subject matter. I don't see anyone rising, so let me ask for a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. All right, the motion was made by Ms. Wellman, seconded by Mr. Mackey. Um, all those in favor of closing the public hearing, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair will vote in the affirmative as well, making that a four to zero vote for our recording secretary's benefit. Um, and um, let me turn to my colleagues to, for their deliberation on this. Um, are there any last items? Or if not, I will accept any motions that my colleagues wish to make. I just have one question through the town manager. Uh, I see that this is up for the transfer of license, but the alteration of premises, wouldn't that be something that would be approved to the planning board? Or would we be voting on that? No, it's for the, it's for the liquor, license, liquor license itself. Okay, so just the alter, what they're talking about. Yeah, doing the the patio. Oh, okay, okay, all right, okay. The new well, with that said, then I will make a motion to um, approve the transfer of license and alteration of premises um, from uh, for MFK to Xperia Operating Tenant uh, V7 LLC Management Operating Agreement. Second. All right, so we have a motion made by Mr. Kratman, seconded by Ms. Wellman, to approve the transfer and alteration of premises. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? And the chair will vote in the affirmative as well. So again, that's a four to zero vote. We wanna welcome you to Tewksbury, sir, and um, look forward to seeing uh, all the good things that are happening over there. Look forward to seeing Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Okay, let me just um, quickly ask if there are any residents who wish to speak on any matters this evening before us. And if not, um, I'm gonna move to our new business. Um, we have an acceptance of a, a street, um, our property rather, I should say, and we spoke. Uh, Mr. Montori, do you want to address this? I know Mr. Sure. Sadwick provided yeah. correspondence. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, there's a there's a memo in the uh, packet from uh, the assistant town manager Steve Sadwick. Uh, we received a request from an, the owner of 12 23 47 Main Street to donate the property uh, for conservation purposes. Uh, the land was accepted by the Conservation Commission. Uh, the Open Space and Recreation Committee has uh, also recommended acceptance. None of the town departments raised any concerns with accepting the property. Uh, there was a 21E environmental report conducted, found no issues with the property. Um, so we are recommending that it be accepted. The parcel is 6.92 acres and 86% of the land is wetlands. Do my colleagues have any questions on this particular request? And if not, um, may I uh, ask for a motion to approve the acceptance? Mr. Chairman, I have one question. Yes. Through you to the town manager. Are there any maintenance issues with the site um, or any expenses that would be associated with us accepting this? We don't know of any. We haven't there's identified no, any. There's no dumping that's been held on there? Or, you know, Nothing. That, the report didn't come up with anything. We haven't okay. viewed anything on our own. It was uh, reviewed by staff, and we haven't seen anything. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any other questions? If not, are there any motions? Mr. Chairman, motion to accept the donation of 2347 Main Street. Second. Okay, so for our record, recording secretary's benefit, the motion's made by Mr. Mackey, seconded by Ms. Wellman. All those in favor of the motion is made, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye, that is four to zero, unanimous vote. Um, we now want to talk briefly about um, entertainment license applications and procedures. This is the product of <coughs> some discussion that we had not too long ago around the uh, subject of entertainment licenses. And I know the uh, 
town manager and his staff were asked to revisit this topic and spend a little time and come back with some recommendations, which I believe they are now presenting to us. So I want to turn it over sure. to the town manager. Um, so there was discussion that we need to revamp the application that the, 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 the the board uh, originally had in place. Uh, we went back and looked at what other communities used for the application, and we took a couple of them and uh, put the uh, proposed revised application together that you see tonight. It's not greatly different from our old one, uh, but I think the big issue, and, and some of the board members have raised, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, really is around the use of the amplification system and how that's defined. Um, it's still in here as a box to check as what type of entertainment you're applying for. Um, but we really, when we were talking about it, I don't know how else to bring that up in the application. So I don't know if you want to keep it the way it is. When the applicant checks that off as a use, you can have further detail when they come in front of the board and make whatever limitations you want. But it was just a tough one to determine. Uh, how you want to address it because it was mentioned at the last meeting. <clears throat> Even someone that's playing acoustic has some type of an amplification system, maybe smaller than a live band. So it's just a matter of how the board wants to handle that. But the rest of the application is consistent with uh, what we've done in the past and uh, what we've seen from other communities. So I appreciate the effort, Mr. Montorian. Um, I do like the fact that you added some questions here around indoor use and outdoor use, which often is an, a source of concern for the board. Um, I think from my standpoint, I think it's fine as you drafted it. Maybe maybe we, what we want to do on the amplification is have one further question around describe the, the use to your point. Is mm -hmm. it a, like entire facility amplification system or is it a portable amplifier or something like that where they can they can specifically be asked to describe the amplification that they're proposing. It's a good idea. You can do that. Otherwise I, I liked um, the the revisions. Let me ask my colleagues if they have any questions, concerns or further suggestions. Mr. Mackey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, through you to the town manager, uh, is this new application going to be digitized and put on a new platform? So the new platform, we haven't rolled out um, the selectman licenses yet. That's something down the road. We're just trying to get up and running with everything else. But the goal is to have all those selectman licenses uh, part of the new platform. Now, mm -hmm. that's not to say we we would still have it online, and people would be able to fill it out online and send it to us, but it's not part of OpenGov at this point. Perfect, thank you. Anyone else? I, I just have a comment. Sure. Um, so this is for new licenses, but we also do renewal of licenses, and mm -hmm. that's something that we brought up as well. And uh, what I would like to see is uh, maybe a little bit of procedure done what the way we renew licenses. A lot of time the licenses are sent out and we're signing them as they're coming in. Um, and I know that you know usually there's a checklist of who sends them out and what we're doing. I think that would be helpful if we got that ahead of time um, to say, okay, this is what's going out. We're sending them to so many businesses. Like, like we had a couple of them that were television you know, and uh, radio and things like that where we ended up waiving them. I don't, I don't think we need to, before we send them and renew licenses, I think it would be helpful, I think, if we saw what is new, what's being renewed, and what's coming to us mm -hmm. ahead of time so that we can take a look and is a nice license really required for this type of service? Yep. Or if we have the questions about amplifi amplification, if somebody has, somebody's there with one guitar and a little speaker in front of them, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. Somebody has a complete drum set and, you know, and, you know, things like, you know, Sound system. Why, you know major, major amplification system, that's something totally different where we may have to look at special licenses. Uh, and we, I know we've sent police department down to check the decibel of different things of what we do. And so we can kind of look at, they can give us an update of you know what that what that equipment what the possibility of the highest you know amplification of that equipment is and if something doesn't get to our limit and there's something maybe we can make it a little bit simple on ourselves if something can go over that limit 
Well, then maybe we need some more, you know, uh, review of it mm -hmm. as well. No. So, so instead of um, what we can do is for our, for our internal procedures, yeah. uh, not on this, we'll, we'll make a note that in, in October I'll send the board a list of the entertainment licenses for each establishment and what it includes. Yep. And, you know, within you know, a couple of weeks, get back to us if you see anything that you want to question. Um, and then when we add the section on uh, the amplification, we can go into the, we'll ask for the specifics and, you know, as much specifics as they can provide on the type of amplification system, uh, even to the amount of uh, sound volume they're going to have. So um, we'll look around for that and, and add it to a section. I have one more thing uh, while we're thinking of that. I, we do have someone that still goes out and reviews some of the machines and different things that goes out. Don't we have uh, somebody that would go and review what is for the amusement devices? Yes, and those type of mm -hmm. things. Yeah, the, so the building inspector and the fire. Comes in, yeah. You know, you're sending the list to that person. That would be a good time for us to see it as well. So this way we can take a look at what's out there and see what's happening in our community. It's like, you know, we just had somebody come in front of us tonight. Who knows what they may be doing with the new ballroom or something else, maybe something else that may require a license that we're unaware of. Okay, when they, yeah, when they, we can make note when they're doing their inspections, the fire and uh, building inspector, they, if they note any particular amusement device or anything else to let us know. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Right. Any other questions? Did you yep. have I do. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you to the town manager. Um, this is great. I think this is great. I agree with the comments my colleagues have made. Um, on the first page, under the first bullet, I would in request the inclusion of the words indoor or outdoor in the phrase and amplification system. So they're thinking about it and indoor or outdoor amplification. And then um, under use of amplification, a checkbox for indoor and outdoor. And the inclusion of the state uh, law that we enforce that Mr. Kratman referenced vis-a-vis um, -vis noise. So that they're already kind of put on notice of if you're doing outdoor you know, amplification, this, this is what we're these are the concerns that we have. Um, I would include those. And I appreciate Mr. Um, Johnson's inclusions um, for commentary as well. So the, that's always the issue. It's the outdoor entertainment. In some communities, you have to get a permit to do outdoor, a special permit just for outdoor entertainment, um, outdoor amplification entertainment. So um, I think this goes a long way to reducing the confusion on the part of the applicant and the board as we go through them. So thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. We'll make the revisions and I'll send it back around. Good changes. Thank you, sir. Thank you for starting the process. Mr. Chairman, one alibi. Um, so I just want to call out when we do look at onboarding these to the new platform, we can leverage the technology to kind of help us, to Mr. Kratman's point, manage that process flow a bit. Mm -hmm. And we're no longer restricted by what can be fit in those lines. When we do it digitally, there's the ability to do drop downs, to do more data input that is yeah. easily queryable and will help us kind of manage and have visibility over is the license for a single TV at a restaurant that's never turned on, or is it for a bar that has plays the Super Bowl? So just something to keep in mind when we actually start the onboarding process. Good. Thank you. Okay, we don't need to take action on that nope. tonight. We'll look for your revisions yeah. and then if you need us to approve them, we will. All right. Thank you. All right, I, um, I want to speak to an item that is not on the published agenda, but it should have been. It fell off um, inadvertently. Um, and my colleagues will recall at our last meeting, we had a tree removal hearing that involved um, a number of trees. I can't recall the exact number, but um, we tabled one tree um, from the list. And we asked uh, the resident and um, our DPW director to um, confer and try to come up with an acceptable solution um, before this board was asked to um, I guess render its final determination on the fate of that single tree. Um, so um, it was intended to be on the agenda. I did speak with um, town council uh, through the town manager late today. Um, in his opinion, we can add that item to this agenda because um, we previously spoke to it in the public session. It was an oversight. Um, that it did not make it to the final agenda. 
And um, what I would just state is that if anyone has concern about that, um, we will keep the record open till Friday at noon um, for any comments that the public might want to issue relative to the topic. Um, but our intention would be to uh, listen to uh, Mr. Hardiman and um, the homeowner if she has any comments this evening, and, and that may lead us to um, hopefully a solution. Um, and I would ask my colleagues just so that we can be clear, um, I'll ask for a, a, a motion and a vote to allow us to proceed on this topic, if that's acceptable. Okay. So may I have a motion to that effect if my colleagues are in agreement? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. All right. So thank you, Mr. Kratman, for making the motion and Mr. Mackey for seconding it. Um, so let's um, let's invite Mr. Hardiman up to Did you want to vote? Did you have a vote? Do you, want to you said a motion and a vote. Was there a You had a vote. I'm you sorry. <laughs> I got ahead of myself. <laughs> so all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Chair will vote aye as well. It's four to zero. I apologize. <laughs> Mr. Hardiman, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and members of the board. I uh, appreciate having the chance to speak in front of you tonight. Um, last we talked, uh, we tabled the matter of the white pine tree in front of 1408 Whipple Road. Mm -hmm. um, I had the opportunity to meet with Ms. Young and her uh, husband, uh, and we talked at length about uh, trees in Tewksbury and, and the importance of those trees uh, and what we could do in, in light of having to take this tree down. Uh, we talked about possibly planting a tree uh, within the right of way or within 20 feet of the right of way under the, the bylaw uh, in Chapter 87 to provide a public shade tree. Uh, unfortunately, she's uh, at a corner lot. There's a couple of the oak trees. There's just not space uh, to do it in that location. Uh, but we did talk about uh, you know planting trees on town property elsewhere uh, because there is a benefit. You know, it, it doesn't have to be a, you know looked at as a, a finite point where you lose a tree, you have to gain a tree. It's, it's a whole community of trees. Um, you know, so we, we talked about that, and we're going to look to find locations where we can uh, plant trees to replace the trees that uh, you know, we lose over time. Uh, you know, we did talk about the Chandler well fields as a possible great, great location. Uh, there is concern about you know, the viability of newly planted trees down there with the, some of the foot traffic. That it experiences, sure. and you know, sure. that, that uh, you know it might not be the best location, but you know, um, we are going to look for locations to to plant trees. All right. And um, were you able to come to an agreement with the Youngs on um, the fate of this one tree? Yes, we have. What, yeah. what, and what was that? It would be to remove the tree. It will be to remove it. Yes. Okay. And and you don't have to get up, but I want to just confirm that you're in agreement with that course of action. Um, actually. Come on. Um, so I want to thank everyone um, on the select board and Mr. Montori for allowing us to have an opportunity to sit down with Mr. Hardiman and talk more about the fate of our tree. Um, and uh, even though it is something that is the tree is going to be coming down, it's it's still not something that we want to have happen. So. Uh, you know, the, a bit, bit of agreement is, is um, kind of stretching it a, a bit, but it's it's going to happen. But um, we thank you for allowing us to go through the process of exploring what we can do and then looking at more things that we could do for the town in order to be able to um, maintain um, the number of trees that we have and perhaps grow that number even. Mm -hmm. So um, I just wanted to say thank you. Okay, well, thank you um, for your um, collaboration, and, and I know it's probably bittersweet, but in the end, what we're, we're, we've done, I think, is educate ourselves here, and hopefully, by extension, uh, additional members of our community about the importance of this topic, and um, we're going to take Mr. Hardiman at his word that uh, he's going to make sure that a few trees get planted to uh, replace those that we've removed. And, and I know there's a commitment at, that, at uh, the DPW facility to make that a reality. It's been there for quite some time. His predecessor was um, an avid uh, um, protector of trees. And um, we clearly have some members of our community that are uh, keeping their eye on those things as well. So, um, so I want to thank you for that. Um, 
and let me just pause there. Um, any other comments that need to be made? Or um, I believe um, you're going to probably ask us to take action on the yes, appeal, Mr. right? Um, all right. So my opening comments were that we would give people an opportunity in written form <coughs> on Friday. Mm -hmm. So um, any motions that are offered relative to the fate of the tree, um, we should hold the action of removal at least until Friday midday so that um, if something comes in that causes us to want to reconsider, we have that opportunity. Um, but uh, with that, I'll ask if my colleagues have a motion. Uh, I, I just have a, a quick question before I make a, mo I'll make a motion to it. Uh, uh, but uh, where the tree is being removed, there's not the possibility once that tree is removed to put something in the replace of where the tree is being removed? <laughs> Uh, no, there's not a whole lot of space in that area. Uh, her, your mailbox is right there. Uh, there's two other oak trees, um, you know, and it's along the, the road edge. Okay. So there's no, I understand. Yep. Okay. Well, I, I will make a motion um, to approve the removal of the tree. Um, what I'm going to do is make a, that as the, the date as of March 27th, which will be next Monday. This way, if people have time to write into us this Friday to be, uh, you know, the date of this motion. Um, you know, I, you know I, I understand and I thank the homeowner for coming down and discussing this with us and working through. I know it's not what you're looking for, uh, but I did talk to Mr. Hardiman who during the last storm we, <coughs> we had numerous trees falling in our community and I was concerned specifically about this one in front of your home to see if that was gonna be, if that was coming down with the, the last storm we had. Um, but like, it would have been something that I think would have happened eventually anyway at, at some point. Um, unfortunately, it's happening now, but I think it's something for the public safety. There's something we have to make this motion. So with that, I will make that motion to happen um, on Monday the 27th. All right. Um, and before I ask for a second, I just want to confirm we have, we have contractors and their commitments that um, have timelines on them. Is that date structure acceptable and will that work? Yes. That okay. Will. All right. Thank you. So could I have a motion, a second to that motion? Right? <clears throat> second. All right. So the motion was stated and made by Mr. Uh, Kratman. It was seconded by Mr. Mackey. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? And I will vote in the affirmative as well. So again, that's a four to zero vote for purposes of our recording secretary. I want to thank you, ma'am. Um, you certainly um, got our attention and hopefully um, we'll continue to safeguard the environment that's uh, so precious in Tewksbury. And thank you, Mr. Hardiman, for taking the time and making the effort. Thank you. Right. Mr. Chairman, if I may. I just want to thank Mrs. Young for um, your stewardship Mm -hmm. regarding the beautification of our community and the gardens and all the work that you've done um, in town on numerous facets of um, nature. And um, I just thank you for that. I know it's affecting you personally in your home. So I think it's an important work and I, I appreciate the work that uh, Mr. Hardiman's done with staff to work with you and your husband on this issue. So thank you. That's right. All right. Great. Okay, our next agenda item is uh, town manager's section. There's nothing on the agenda specifically, but let me just double check. Town council. Nope, the only thing I have is next is the yep. town council invoice. Yep, so we'll move right to town council invoice. Um, I just one town council invoice uh, for February 16th through the 28th, 2023, in the amount of $3,570, and I would recommend approval. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Okay, we have a motion made by Ms. Wellman, seconded by Mr. Mackey. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. That will be four to zero. Um, we don't have any minutes this evening. Um, that will bring us to board member reports. Um, Mr. Kratman, you want to leave <coughs> this evening, sir? I'm uh, sure, yeah. Um, I don't really, the board, my next LRTA mem, uh, board is scheduled for this Thursday, so I'll have an updated report at that. Um, but I did want to bring up something that we have been working on as well. Um, the town manager reached out to us and as well as our delegation talking about um, 
line items for the state house uh, for things that we should be putting forward and i just want to discuss them so the residents know that we're working with our delegation to put those out there um, so we work together as a board and we all sent recommendations to the town manager asking that our delegation uh, get us some funding for this town and uh, some of the things that we're talking about is seeking uh, three hundred thousand dollars for police three hundred thousand dollars for fire that we think that we could use for this budget for the Tewksbury State Hospital. Also asking for an earmark um, for the police wellness in the amount of $50,000 and $50,000 for the fire department, heart and cancer. Uh, another would be uh, $100,000 for police radio, I'm sorry, fire radios, uh, $500,000 in sidewalk funds, a million dollars in water distribution, $500,000 in drainage improvements, $300,000 for recreation facility parking lot and uh, Route 38, uh, which we've been working on and we're getting section by section uh, moving. We're still finalizing the uh, project that is going from Old Boston Road up to Colonial, which we we're able to extend a little bit um, up to where the hospital is. Uh, we're looking for uh, $400,000 to uh, for design to complete the next section of that project and then hopefully $10 million to, to finalize construction so that we can do some widening, uh, sidewalk improvements. Uh, there's a lot of sections still on Route 38 that do not have sidewalks. <clears throat> We've been pushing our delegation to get us additional funding for that. So I just want to let the public know that we have been working with our delegation. We have been asking them to send uh, state funding back to us and I just want the public to know that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Crabman. Um, and, and I appreciate your um, bringing that up. Uh, Mr. Mackey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I want to open with seconding uh, Mr. Crabman's point of discussion and uh, saying reach out to the delegation, make sure we're, uh, we're pushing and making it known that we, we need these funds. Um, and the other piece is had the opportunity with a few other members uh, of this body to attend the grand opening of Eco Auto last weekend. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, they've had quite the journey. Uh, they've been in front of us quite a few times as well as other bodies and uh, they, they finally got there. So congratulations to them and uh, looking forward to them being successful in our community. That's it. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Um, Ms. Wellman. Thank you. Um, I have a few items. Um, first, the <coughs> Tewksbury Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Advisory Committee held two um, LGBTQ listening sessions last week. One was virtual on Zoom as a webinar, and one was held in person here on Wednesday night. Um, the purpose of these meetings were to develop SMART goals for a Winchester Hospital grant that the Frontline Initiative um, secured. And so we had some great feedback from those sessions um, and from some other work that's been done in town, and we'll be working on developing those SMART goals um, to build resiliency and sustainability for the LGBTQ community in Tewksbury. Um, so that'll be some events and other kinds of things that'll go on. So we'll, I'll update you on that as we develop those. Second, um, the Northern Middlesex Council of Governments held a housing production plan listening session um, last week, I think it was Thursday. They're blurring together now. I think I've had a yeah. night meeting every night. Yeah. Thursday. Consistently, yeah. So, and um, Alex Louder did that with um, staff from NIMCOG, and they did a great job um, introducing some topics and preliminary results of that housing production plan for feedback. We had uh, really, I think, a good participation um, from the community for that. And I thank those that participated. Um, I want to thank the chamber and Mr. Kratman for their work with Eco Auto. Um, it was a nice event that um, Mr. Mackey referenced, and um, it's great to welcome this new business to our community. So really exciting. I hope people go visit them. And finally, I just wanted to um, thank Jay Kelly for his service. Um, and just wanted to read into the record that I thank him for his consistency and his solid and equitable leadership during the pandemic, which was one of the hardest times in our nation. And he did a great job leading this board through that. Um, I feel privileged to have gotten to know him through our work here and um, thank him for his kindnesses, particularly when my mother was ill and staying with me, that his words of understanding and encouragement meant so much. Um, his voice for responsibility for our residents, for our seniors, I think was well heard and respected across the community. And I thank him again. Thank you. 
Mr. Chairman, before we final, I, I did want to make one comment about Mr. Ma uh, Mr. <laughs> Kelly. Before Go ahead, Mr. Kelly. I, I just wanted yep. to end it. You can take the floor. I appreciate it. Uh, give me a couple more minutes. Um, I sincerely thank you, Ms. Wellman. I couldn't agree more. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Kelly, you know, worked so hard. Uh, he had a difficult job. Uh, he's had many different things going on in his personal life, and he always put this board first, uh, especially what we went through in the last six years. Mm -hmm. I've taken, Jay and I have gone back and forth on many issues, argued, fought, disagreed on many different things. And because of that, we're gonna have a lifelong friendship. Um, I, I love somebody that you can argue with, fight with, disagree with, and still walk away with respect. And because of that, the two of us will be friends for life. Uh, he has nothing but this community's best interest at heart. That's all he wanted to do is to make this community a better place. I respect him. We're going to miss him. And I hope him, wish him the best. And I hope that he changes his mind in the future and decides to come back because I think his voice will be sorely missed on this board. So that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, I have one item I just want to speak to, um, and it's on behalf of my colleagues. It's not a board member report, but um, we met in executive session a few weeks back, um, and the purpose of that executive session was a contractual matter uh, pertaining to the town manager's employment contract with the town of Tewksbury through this board. Um, and we uh, take that topic up each year at this time so that we can ensure that um, from a budget management perspective before town meeting, we've addressed and instructed the town manager as to um, what our expectations are and what agreement we've come to relative to compensation. Um, in an effort to be as transparent as possible, we've always reported the results of those discussions out. And I think uh, certainly, in my opinion, um, the town manager's employment status with Tewksbury um, and compensation with Tewksbury is uh, fully transparent and has been since the very first day that he started working with us um, a number of years ago. Um, so for the benefit of the public, the board voted unanimously, and that included Mr. Kelly, um, to uh, instruct the town manager to include in the budget that will go forward to town meeting in May um, an, an annual increase of 2.25% to his base pay. Um, and we also um, agreed that at our initiation, not his request, I might add, um, to uh, add one additional year uh, to the contract term um, so that um, there would be um, a period of further stability for the community. Um, we will um, ask him to make sure that those funds are budgeted after town meeting, assuming town meeting approves the budget inclusive of this amount. Um, we will then ask town council to draft up the necessary amendment to Mr. Montori's employment contract with those two uh, terms. Um, and that was the extent of our discussion relative to the contract. There is no, there are no other changes that have been discussed nor made. Um, and again, just in an uh, er era where we want to be as transparent as possible, um, we wanted to report that status out to the community. And I want to thank Mr. Montori for his uh, collaboration, cooperation, and most importantly, the good work that he does every day of the week um, for the community as a whole and for this board, quite frankly. Thank you, and thank you for the, um, for the decision you made. I appreciate it, and I look forward to adding another year. Very good. All right, so I have nothing else um, to add from a member report perspective. Um, so that's going to bring us uh, to the end of our agenda. And I will ask if there's a motion to adjourn at uh, 7.48 p.m. So moved. Second. Okay, the motion was made by Mr. Mackey, seconded by Ms. Wellman. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye as well. We are adjourned. Have a great evening. Thank you.